Good morning. This is the Planes World webcast that can be found each week on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. You can also find us on Spotify and uh, Apple Podcasts. You get more information, find out about past shows and future shows at my website, which is behind me, planesworld.net. I'm your host, Blaine Greenfield, and I'm here in my Zoom studio in lovely downtown Fairview, North Carolina. Each week, we focus on positive news and information of people and organizations in both Western North Carolina and throughout the country. And it's my pleasure to introduce today Larissa Griffin, Director of Fundraising and Engagement um, for Ash the Asheville Humane Society, and Mabel Luhan, who is Senior Manager of Communications at the Asheville Human Humane Society. And what you can do, guys, is wave to all your friends and friends who are watching this. So if you're watching, yeah, that's Larissa and uh, Mabel. I should mention that Larissa Griffin is a passionate nonprofit fundraiser with over 18 years in the profession. And so you started when you were seven or was it eight? I know. Started? It's kind of hard to believe it at my ripe young age of 28. But. 20, okay, is it? <laughs> wow, looking good. Uh, last four and a half in animal welfare, she and her husband, Robert, share their lives with four fur babies. Mabel Luhan began her work with nonprofits in marketing and communications for performing arts and social justice organizations. With a background as a professional dancer and writer, she's eager, eager to share her creativity with others. She loves animals and is thrilled to be able to combine writing, photography, and design for a crucial community cause. And so, uh, same question that um, Larissa mentioned, uh, do you have any dogs, cats, snakes? Do you have any pets also? I do. I have three pets. I have two cats and one dog. Okay. It's funny. I shouldn't let my wife listen to it, but we, we have one cat and she's after me. She, she wants to get a dog. We've never owned a dog. Um, but yours get along together, Mabel? Yes. It was a transition period when they came together. Um, yeah. When my partner and I moved in together, they had not lived with each other. He came with a dog. I came with cats. Um, and it was a transition, but now they're best friends. Are they really? Okay, cool. So that, that's the big debate in our house. You just have the the, the four cats, Larissa? I have two cats and two dogs. Oh, four. So, four. Yeah, oh, they two, uh, they oh. still um, um, kind of keep their distance from each other most of the time. But yeah, it's it's fine. It's a happy furry family. <laughs> yeah, Cynthia says to me, you know, um, she's worried. She thinks the cats will get a little, you know, wants a companion for the cat. But I say, you know, it shouldn't be lonely, maybe the idea. But I say to her, you know, it's like uh, I have one wife, you know, and I'm happy with one wife. You know, I'm not looking to have, <laughs> have two to get along better. So that's that's our discussion in our house. In terms well, of when, um, when you're ready, come see us. We can we can find you a perfect companion. Yeah, we just we're worried. We're, we have a um, one cat and he's very happy um, by himself. But anyway. Let me ask you both then, Mabel, I'll start with you. Um, your background, like as a child, you grew up where? In Santa Fe, New Mexico. Okay. And you know, as a child growing up in Santa Fe, New Mexico, did you always know you want to be involved with animals and, and nonprofit? Well, it's a funny story. I was terrified of dogs when I was growing up. So... Maybe no, <laughs> maybe I didn't always think that. Um, but growing up, we had a lot of animals. So my parents actually got a large dog for us so that I would kind of be desensitized. Um, he was a beautiful, like 120 pound white lab. He was really beautiful. <laughs> and I quickly had to learn to not be afraid of him. Um, and during that time, we also had three cats. So throughout my childhood, we had a mixture of cats, dogs, guinea pigs at one point. Um, they were always a really big part of my life. And did they get along? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> the guinea pigs were kept in a room. They were technically my brothers. And the cats and dogs definitely coexisted, but they didn't love each other. Yeah, the um, you mentioned a white lab. I've never seen that. It must have been a beautiful dog. Wow. He mm -hmm. was That's, really beautiful. Is that atypical to have a white lab? He was mixed with, he was mixed with a white lab german shepherd and golden retriever so he was just he looked like a chocolate lab but white okay, um i've seen dogs in our shelter who look like him but not quite as big as him so that must have been quite a surprise though then when you got involved with the humane society because your other mm -hmm. background had not been with uh animals the, the professional background 
That's right. Yeah. Professionally, I've worked with a lot of different nonprofits, but they've always been kind of focused on um, performing arts and then kind of the community, like community causes. What really interested me about the Humane Society was that I've always loved pets and I had pets of my own and I was able to use the skills that I had at other nonprofits at the Humane Society. And when you were involved with the other performing arts, um, were you did you perform also or was it raising funds? Yeah, throughout college, I performed. And then right after college, I was dancing as a professional um, in a couple of companies. And then around the time the pandemic happened, I shifted more into like a communications role, um, marketing, kind of uplifting performing arts programs. And so the rest, I guess you're, you're kind of grateful we have um, uh, a person with this background because then she actually, she dances also for the pets or she she uh, entertains them as well. Wildly entertaining, yes. Okay. <laughs> cool. The animals love her just as much as the people do here. <laughs> and I'll ask you the same, the same question. I don't know if I ever asked you, but same thing too. As a child, you grew up where? In Horseshoe, the big town. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, in between Hendersonville and Brevard. If you blink twice, you'll miss it, I promise. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, don't even, I don't even know the town. What, really? What's, ta what's the town? Out. Yeah, it's, uh, do you know Etowa? Vaguely, you know. Okay, but, and uh, of course you are like melting into each other right now. So They're, same thing too. As a child, there. as a child, did you have pets? I did. I can't remember a time in my life when I did not have a pet. Yeah. And do you have more than one pet? Um. Yeah, I have. Yeah, as a child, uh, four no, now. Four now, but as a child, you had more than one pet. Um, as a child, we usually had a dog and a cat. Um. I can't think of any times that we had more more than one no there was a time when we had more than one because my uncle went on vacation and asked us to dog sit and um while he came back a couple of weeks later he never came back for his dog so <laughs> we had then two dogs and a cat so but she was lovely we we really appreciated her and so if you would Larissa kind of give me the summary version that how you got to which is kind of an interesting background how you got to where you started out in nonprofits to Asheville Humane Society. Yeah, so I started out with um, United Way of Asheville and Muncombe County, um, gosh, 18 years ago, I guess it's been now, and um, worked with nonprofits in the health and human services kind of arena for most of my career. And then about, um, let's see, about four and a half years ago, I um, started working with Blue Ridge Humane Society in Hendersonville. And um, I was on the board there before I started working there. And I just realized what a great organization it was. And my passions were really into it. And I was like, okay, yeah, we can, we can fundraise for animals. Let's do this and switched over to that. And um, then after three and a half years there, I started working here at Asheville Humane last year. So yeah, it's, it's great to fundraise for animals. It's nice to be their voice and to be able to, um, you know, share the needs that they have with people since they can't verbalize those. And what's really cool, I imagine fundraising said for animals is in some respects, I guess, I would say it's easier, but it's less challenging than some work. As you know, I've been, I try to raise, help nonprofits to raise funds and people love animals, you know, like are seeing animals as opposed to, um, uh, my background, uh, Mabel, sometimes with some uh, the theatrical groups, and that's sometimes a hard thing to, you know, yeah. you can't show cute little some things right. for a theater. And so you, you catch a break in that sense. And let me ask you, Mabel, for the folks who, who aren't aware of the um, Asheville Humane Society, uh, w what's it all about? Yeah, that's a great question. I think coming from the outside two years ago, I saw it as a place where you could adopt cute animals and I didn't really know much else. Right. I moved to Asheville about four years ago. So I was pretty new to the area when I came into the role. And what really shocked me about Asheville Humane is how many services they're providing to the community. So it's not just a place to adopt animals, but it's really a place that provides behavior resources, medical resources, financial resources. Um, it's kind of the hub for all things animals, for people who love animals and who maybe are either looking to add one or to get help for one. In terms of, and, and we talked about it just briefly before, um, uh, getting an animal, it's also a place, right? Can you 
through Asheville Humane Society. Can you foster animals as well? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And explain that if you would as an option for some people who might think about having an animal, but not quite ready for it. Fostering is a way to go. Yeah, it is so amazing. I have been blown away by our foster department and I have actually fostered through them. Um, they provide everything that you could ever need to foster an animal, all of the supplies, all of the food, all of the litter, if you have a cat, um, and then you bring them in for medical recheck. So you're not taking them to any sort of outside vet. Our medical team Very is nice. providing them all of the care that they could ever need. Um, and our foster department is so on top of it. They're always contacting people as soon as they have an animal who might need a home. And you really have the autonomy to choose how long you want to keep that animal for. Well, you and I were talking off the air about the idea that if people want to check whether it's it's a good environment for an animal. This is a good, good way to do it, to foster it. And then, yeah. yeah. Well, what about, and, and I can say we were one time uh, failed foster parents, you know, foster whatever. It, does that happen often that people foster? How often do they, they wind up with their pet itself? That's a great question. I don't know the exact statistics, but it's pretty often. We have some fosters who are just, you know, ride or die foster parents for life. They never adopt the fosters. Um, and we have some foster parents who are so excited to be able to have tons of animals in their house. And then the first one they get, they adopt. <laughs> so that's not a bad thing to be a failed foster? No, no, definitely not. Because one way or another, we're getting that animal into a home, you know? So um, the important thing is that that animal is not having to live in a kennel or in a shelter life, which is not like the best environment for an animal. I mean, we try to make it the best that we possibly can, but that's not where an animal wants to be. So whether it's through adoption or fostering, at least they're getting into a nice cozy home. I will say that foster parents have first pick if it comes to adoption. So if they're thinking about adopting an animal, they get the first, um, they get dibs pretty much on that animal. <laughs> and how long is the fostering process typically? So if you agree to foster a pet, how long does that typically run? Yeah, so you fill out an application online and then that application gets reviewed by our foster department. And then the only thing that you need to complete before being able to take a foster pet home is to attend one of our foster orientations in person. And that's put on by one of our foster um, department team members. She walks you through what fostering means, how emergencies work, that sort of thing. Um, and then you're able to take a foster whenever you're ready. And I guess... This has become a lot easier without COVID. I mean, COVID was, well, you weren't, I guess, Larissa, you weren't there with COVID, but you were there toward the tail end of COVID? I came in like, yeah, towards the end. And so that must have been a tough time to be running a humane society with, with COVID happening, was it? Yeah. I mean, I've heard that it was really tricky at the beginning, figuring out how to um, continue, you know, all of the sanitation of the animal areas while also yeah. staying really clean human wise, <laughs> like keeping the germs to yourself that way. Um, yeah, the cool thing is a lot of our animal care staff already wears masks to help kind of with the smell when cleaning and um, just being around chemicals when cleaning. And so that wasn't too hard of a transition, but um, getting animals adopted was quite tricky. Now, if I guess Larissa, the question then, so we mentioned the Asheville Humane Society. Um, what's tying with the Buncombe County Animal Shelter, the, the relationship yeah. between the two? Yeah, so we have a great relationship with the county, Buncombe County. Um, we actually have the contract to operate the Buncombe County shelter. And so um, it's Asheville Humane Society staff working in the county building. Um, and it's right here beside us. If you've ever been on our campus here at 14 Forever Friend Lane right. in Asheville, um, you'll see that there are two separate buildings and one is the county shelter and one is the adoption center, which is owned by Asheville Humane. Um, and so our our staff work closely together to get the animals um, in and housed and cared for and then able to get them into a loving home really quickly just because of the proximity and, and the way we work together. Which them. is great. Talk about the process though. So with the animal shelter, um, do you take in animals or do how do people, how, how do animals get to the shelter and, and who are the animals that are there? 
Yeah, so um, there's several different ways that they can come in. Um, they can come in through Animal Control, um, City of Asheville, and also Bunko County both have Animal Control divisions. And so um, they can bring animals into us that way. Or um, sometimes people will, you know, find an animal that is sick or um, injured or something like that, uh, that they can't care for themselves and they know it needs um, quick attention and they'll bring that animal to us as well. So no, they, um, several different ways, but yeah. No, the animal shelter, one time was it that it wasn't, there wasn't space or room for animals or is that a, yeah, a, last, a, um, a happened the whole time? Yeah, it was like last August right. till October, I believe it was. Um, we had to um, kind of close down to large, healthy dogs. Um, so we were still taking in other things, but we were really encouraging people to care for the animals that they found as strays um, if they were large, healthy dogs, because we didn't have the capacity to care for them. So if somebody finds an animal, what should they do if they see an animal that doesn't have a home or obviously doesn't have a home what should they do yeah do you, you want to take some mabel yeah, yeah absolutely um we have really worked to kind of rework how we are um allowing systems of lost and found pet resources to work for our community so right now we have a really great streamlined way for folks to go to our website and you'll find um, a section on our website called I Need Help. And it says either I lost a pet or I found a pet. And depending on your situation, let's say you just found a stray pet on your street, you can click that and you can immediately input all of the pet's information in a photo and it'll produce what's called a lost pet report that will show up on our website. And we've been working to reintroduce this into our community so that when someone has lost a pet and they're looking for a pet, they can go to our website and see all of the recently found animals. Um, and that has really increased our reunification rate without them having to come and individually look at animals in the shelter or call and say, have you found this dog with this description? Um, another thing we have really worked hard to do is introduce microchip scanners throughout the city of Asheville. So, you know, the majority of pets at this um, time are getting microchips input into their, into right behind their little backs. Um, and those microchips have their pets inform or their owner's information. And so right now we have about, I think, 31 microchips in the city. They're stationed at breweries, at vets offices, right outside the Buncombe County Animal Shelter. And so if someone has found a pet, they can go to one of these microchip scanners, totally free, scan the animal and see if they have a microchip. And if they do, they will be able to see that um, owner's contact information and reunify them. I was so, wondering, how effective is that? Yeah, it's really effective, but only if the owner has updated their information. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So but it's really important that say your phone number changes, that you remember to go online and change your pet's information as well. Because I, I imagine, um, I, or I don't imagine, I'm just wondering that how often do people get reuni reunited through the chip process? Yeah, well, I'm not sure about chips specifically because our microchips are through a third party system, but I know that in 2021 and 2022, we reconnected over 1,500, both years, 1,500 pets with their owners, um, either through the shelter or outside of the shelter. So that's our total number. So if somebody wants to get their pet chipped, is that something you do where they go to the vet? How does, how does a pet get chipped? Yeah, they have to go to the vet. So they would have to go to their own personal vet, but um, by North Carolina law, any animal that is adopted out of a facility has to be microchipped beforehand. So if anyone adopts an animal from Asheville Humane Society, they will already be microchipped. And the same goes for Brother Wolf and Mountain Pet Rescue and those sorts of things. It was a compliment to you folks. Um, real quick, I'll tell the story. When we had cats, we moved to Fairview and they got out the first day. You know, we had, a, it was a long story, I won't go into it, but you guys were great because every day, for like six months, my wife was checking the, the website. It was fantastic. Didn't didn't work, but it didn't. We we didn't find the cats. It was a great service you offered. You know, it's like re religiously, she was uh, checking it. The website also is that a place to check for people wanting to adopt.
pets. Yeah. The really cool thing about our website is that it integrates with our shelter service provider. So similar to like a doctor's office, we have a software that keeps all sorts of different um, profiles and charts for the animals. And so um, on our website, you can see all available cats and dogs and it updates in real time. So um, as soon as an animal begins the adoption process, they're removed for the, from the website. So if someone had their eyes set on that animal, they would know it's no longer available. So in terms of somebody looking to adopt, Larissa, is that the best way to, if they want to adopt to contact you folks and, and describe the process and what happens when they contact you, what takes place? Yeah, um, checking out the website is the best way to get started because you can see all the adoptable um, dogs, cats, bunnies, snakes if we have them um pigs goats horses like we have we have them all we have Noah's Ark here so um <laughs> not here actually but we we help them all find homes and so looking on the website you can see all of those in categories under adopt and um, it's a great way to get started and then if you see something you're interested in um, and want to visit with you can come to the adoption center during our open hours and meet with that animal or, um, you know, see lots of animals and see what the options are and see who's going to be a great fit for your home. Now on the website, they have the pictures. Um, I know some places have live, you know, you can see the animals live in action. Do, do you have that at all? We don't, unfortunately. Like, that would be a cool addition though. It yeah, would be yeah. really cool. Have you seen it? Some places I've, I've seen have it and you can actually check out the animal itself. So when somebody wants to adopt, uh, they, they fill in the paperwork and then they check the website and they come to visit you. Um, to some people, it takes it takes several visits or it doesn't have to happen right away. It, it... Yeah, it's a very conversational um, process and uh, council based process. And so our adoption counselors are really, really great. Shout out to you guys um, who really take into consideration what your lifestyle is like, what your schedule is like, what kind of animal you're looking for, what your activity level level is like are you a hiker or do you like to sit on the couch and, and watch tv at night you know like all the different um kind of nuances of life that could make a big difference in which animal you might um, want to take home and so they'll talk to you about all that and make sure it's a great fit um before you actually process the adoption but one really cool thing that we've just implemented in the last several months i guess probably two months maybe um it's called the test drive program and it's called the test drive program because you can literally take an animal home for up to a week and see if it's a great fit in your home. You, it's no harm, no foul if you have to bring them back. Like say if, if your kitty cat Fluffy does not like this dog oh, at oh, all yeah. and you can tell it's going to be a real torturous time if they stay together, you can bring that dog back um, and you can just let us know what you've observed. You know, just give us the information. Did the dog, you know, chase the cat? Did the dog interact well with other people and other animals in the community and things like that? Um, either way, it's a great situation for the animal because they get out of the shelter for a little while and get to have like a slumber party with you. And um, then we get better information when they come back, if they come back to us. But more often than not, it's a sealed deal and <laughs> they go home and stay home. That's a great idea. You're giving me an idea for myself. But do you recommend that somebody should do that or foster? Uh, what, what do you recommend? So typically, um, the animals that are available for fostering are not yet available to be adopted. So people who are fostering animals are usually fostering animals who are undergoing medical treatment. And so we haven't made them available yet because we're paying for all their medical treatment. Um, maybe they have Khaleesi virus, like which is an upper respiratory infection in kittens, or maybe they're like trying to get rid of worms and we're paying for that to happen. Um, once they become available for adoption, they kind of transition away from the foster department and then they can either go on test drives or they can become adoption ambassadors, which means someone is fostering them, but they sign a contract to help them find their forever homes. So it's a little bit of a different way of interacting with those animals. Oh, well, you love that. You can give a title to become an pretty impressive, you become an ambassador. Yeah. You know, for, <laughs> for Asheville Humane Society. Yeah. They are pretty cool. In doing all this work, I'm kind of impressed. I'll ask you two questions. So right now, 
how many pets are you housing as of any given day, approximately how many pets? Oh gosh. Um, I would say probably between the shelter and the adoption center, it's well over and, and foster, I should say well over 300, 350, maybe. I'm looking right now. I can pull it up. It's really interesting because in our system, we have so many, um, reports of lost and found animals but those animals are not housed in our facilities they're just information we have about animals so it looks like right now Larissa you were totally right we have 320 animals in our physical care okay so it's quite a, a large number of animals and it'll tie right into then uh the idea that to run this you need to raise money from time to time you know it's yes. I mean, it doesn't run itself so talk then about the fundraising aspect of this, that this is something you're always, I guess you're always trying to raise funds for the Humane Society. Is that true? Yeah, we are always in fundraising mode here. We um, have a few events that are uh, very specific to us that are our signature events. Um, one of those being Dying to be Kind in April. It's usually the first Tuesday in April. Um, you've probably seen all the materials out and about in the community at all the different restaurants um, and bars and coffee shops and um, all the different places. Um, this past year was um, a really, really great year. I believe we raised over $120,000 through that one day event. Um, and it's basically those businesses who who love us and want to share with us, um, committing to giving a percentage of their proceeds that day from whatever shifts they're open um, to Asheville Humane Society. And so people can go and check it out a little bit beforehand, make sure of the restaurants they're going to um, go see that day and go visit and they can plan their their uh, game accordingly, you know, where they want to have breakfast, lunch and dinner just <laughs> to support Asheville Humane Society. So yeah, I've done that a couple times. It's really cool because you have volunteers were each of the centers and it was kind of cool that they were greeting people and and whatnot you also one other thing too i went to years ago um an individual i think it had a party or reception or something i forgot where it was a beautiful house you know and they had like all sorts of pets there um they had like but i don't know what you call the event but that people can do that if they want they can host a i guess to have an open house and have yeah, their, their yeah. If, they, if they want to host an event for us we would welcome that that, um, we can make it super easy and help them with, you know, all the um, the ways to promote and different tips on how to get the message out there and um, all those kinds of things. If they're interested in hosting a party at their home or, you know, at a business or restaurant or whatever, um, the sky's the limit. We can have, you know, you can have a coffee party in the morning um, on your front deck or you could have a full on catered meal at night and um, invite people and then ask them to give to Asheville Humane. So it was just a great event. There were like, like you said, it was at night and there were at least 10 different pets there as well. You know, people were just yeah. coming, just a, a fun thing. Is that something else too, that in terms of um, events, uh, do you have any animals? Do they go in, in businesses and stay at businesses? Is that a place where people could, you can also host an animal to, for other people to see? Do you do that at all? So we do not have, I, I think, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think you're thinking about how like Patton um, Avenue Pet Company has cats right, yeah. who live in there or like Petco has animals who live there. We do not have any of our animals live off site, but we do um, sometimes take animals to events, adoptable animals to events as kind of again, an ambassador of being like, this animal is thanking you for coming to this event and also they're available for adoption. So it's a little bit more of like an individual situation, but because our adoption center gets so much traffic and because it is a very large facility, we found a lot more success keeping all our pets in one area because people are coming there to look for them. And talk about one of the way people can get involved in, and we've done this through the Humane Society is that you also take pet food, or at least in the past, we've donated, when we've had a, a cat pass or something, and we had mm -hmm. all sorts of cat food, we brought it to, do you welcome those kinds of, of um, adopt, uh, those kinds of donations? Absolutely. We make it super easy too, because you can bring those um, kinds of donations to any of our three locations, really, 
Um, you can bring them here to our adoption center. Well, actually more than that. The shelter, uh, both here on Forever Friend Lane, you can bring them to the thrift store over at River Ridge Marketplace um, or to our admin office over at River Ridge as well. Because people don't realize that if they have pet food that's not being used, like so you guys can use it. I know yeah. you've also donated to the Humane Society. You have um, pet toys and you've had um, the cat, you know, when they climb or over you know and so you want to get rid of the house you'll, you'll take it sometimes right yeah thank you thanks for thinking of that that's really generous when people um you know give us things from their animals past or um i talked to a lady the other day and she said she i was at an event and she came through and showed me her dog that she adopted from Asheville humane and she said i live right next door i'm coming right back and I'm going to bring you some of his treats because he has way too many. And she <laughs> brought me two full bags of treats, which was amazing. Well, it's yeah. interesting too. And I apologize. I think pronounced your first name is Larissa. Right. Okay. I sorry for mispronouncing it. But do you also take aside from the pet the, having way too many things? You also take pet toys as well. Yes, definitely. Because you know, I don't know you folks see it, but with our cat. He gets very tired of you know toy after you know like maybe two two days or something. So we have all these pet, pet toys as as well. Um, yeah, yeah, come on. Let me ask you both: What's the favorite part of your job? Favorite part of my job is um, probably seeing the animals that get adopted and they're going home pictures. Um, we have a, a Slack channel, as we call it here, uh, the Slack platform to show the adoption pictures of the animals. And um, when I see their sweet little faces, you know, it's just like you see online where they're so sad and so pitiful when they come in. And then they're so happy and so just like loving and just full of gratitude for their adopters and their new families. And um, that transformation is the best. And Mabel, yeah. same thing of you? Do you have a favorite part I of your job? I think so. I think that is the most heartwarming part. I think I like my job in a lot of other ways. And like, I like some of the more mundane job tasks of it. But I think what like warms my heart the most is being able to see those animals actually find their families. And then a lot of times their families will bring them back and they are transformed dogs. They're so happy. In terms of the community getting involved, we talked a little bit about they can support uh, Asheville Humane Society from a financial standpoint. Uh, can people volunteer to work at the um, Humane Society? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. What, what kind of things do they do? We have such a robust, robust volunteer program. I mean, it is amazing to me every time I learn more about it, but um, let me see if I can list all the ways that they can volunteer. They can volunteer in play group and help facilitate play between dogs. That requires them to have a little bit more behavior training, which they can learn through us. They can walk dogs on um, two programs. One is called Hiking Hounds, which is like a little bit longer hikes out in the Arboretum usually. And then the other program is Mountain Mutts. And those are shorter, like maybe a mile long hikes. We also have something called Urban Tales, where people can walk dogs around the city, so they're getting a little bit more socialization. We also have um, a lot of volunteer opportunities inside the shelter, and those are usually like doing our laundry, folding the laundry, um, putting laundry away. There's more laundry than you could believe with the animal shelter. <laughs> um, we have like Kitty Playmate, Doggy Playmate, where they're going into their kennels and playing with them. Um, Larissa, what am I missing? Um, some admin tasks, you know, helping with letters, helping with events, things that we do, um, you know, just daily kind of practice things. Um, there's front desk opportunities here at the Adoption Center. Um, I mean, you name it, we have a volunteer role for you. If you're an introvert, an extrovert, if you like animals, don't like animals, um, you know, you could work at the thrift store if your jam is retail. Mm -hmm. um there's there's something for everybody here and you just mentioned something talk about the thrift st store where is that and, and what do you do there yeah so it's um a store that basically recycles things that are donated to us to uh, benefit the animals of Asheville Humane so if you have clothes or furniture or um you know sports 
gear or whatever it is you might want to donate to us, you can bring it to the thrift store over at River Ridge Marketplace in East Asheville. And we turned that into money for the animals because someone will want to buy that. And um, so it's really multi-purpose. It's recycling items instead of them going into the landfill and it's helping the animals by raising funds. So to kind of bring this together, if folks are interested, I guess, finding out more about Asheville Humane Society, I guess the very first thing they do, check the website, which you do a pretty good yes. job on that. Mabel, what's the website address again? AshevilleHumane.org. Okay. And that'll have almost anything they want to find out about Asheville Humane Society. Yeah. <laughs> it has anything you could ever need. And also it has many forms to contact people if you have more questions. Do you have a... Um, in terms of the forms, do you have a, 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 a questionnaire? Or is there something that people can find out if a, a, adopting a pet is right for them? Is that something you have there? They could take a questionnaire or, you know, seeing what, what pets are good for them. Is that ever something you we have? We don't have that. I like that idea, like a little quiz. Yeah. But like Larissa mentioned, um, our adoption process is so conversational. We really encourage folks to come in and have a conversation, even if they're not looking for a pet. Our adoption counselors will um, have like an appointment. They're, they're not scheduled appointments, but they will meet with people, anyone who comes in the door to talk about whether there's a specific animal they're looking for, what their apprehensions are about getting an animal, anything that you could imagine. And they're so good at doing their job. I like that. That'd be a fun job for somebody to have, being an adoption counselor. I, I, yeah. I love, what, what What's the qualifications for becoming an adoption counselor? That's a great question. I don't know off the top of my head. I mean, but how, how many adoption counselors? Page, though. We might have one available. Yeah, no, I mean, it's how many, on our website. No, I just love it. How many adoption counselors are there? I believe there are six. Okay, really? Wow, that's, that's pretty including, cool. Including the adoptions manager. So there's a manager that oversees all of the adoptions and the adoption counselor. So I think it's a team of six. Approximately how many folks do work at the Asheville Humane Society? 89. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of people. And I'll give yeah, you, yeah. for both of you, I'll give you one fundraising idea if you don't do it. But I tell the, to this, all people have pets. Uh, do you have stickers available for people to put on their front doors? You know, you know what I'm talking about? And and I tell everybody who owns pets and so many people don't have this, you know, so the fire department knows you have a cat or a dog and where the location yeah. is. Do you have that? We don't, but that's a great idea. It's, I like it. It's, seriously, it's very inexpensive item. And I, I've done it with a couple of other organizations. I'm telling you, you're doing real service for people and just come in and then donate what you want, you know, just get the stickers. But please yeah. consider doing that because so many people uh, don't take that into account, you know, that they have pets in their home. Or the other thing, um, I don't know, we, we once researched you folks on doing this too. If you have a pet and um, you're going to, um, let's see, um, yeah, in the, in the will, do you have an option as another fundraising option? Is that an option for people to make arrangements through the Humane Society? Yeah, it we is. actually have um, what's called the Peace of Mind program, which is kind of getting a new kickstart because we have a sponsor, um, uh, Craig Associates downtown. They are an attorney and firm that um, works with people building trusts and among other things. And so they've sponsored the Peace of Mind program and the Legacy Society. And um, so if you you know want to plan ahead for your animal's care, should you, you know, predecease them, then that's a good way to make sure your animals will be well taken care of. Um, and then also with the Legacy Society, um, it's kind of hand in hand with that, leaving money in your will or in your estate plans for Asheville Humane. If anybody's listening, I really hope they consider that, Larissa, because so many people don't think about it. You know, it's never going to happen right. to them. And yeah. the very first time Cynthia and I ever discussed it with our lawyers, you know, they looked at us like we're crazy, but, you know, we didn't have to be close by and we wanted to make sure that our cat would be taken care of. And so just another thing, they contact now the uh, Humane Society. So yes. the best bet is to go to the website, find out all this information. And I'll close with one final thing you mentioned to me off the air, Larissa. You have an event coming up and you can maybe do another show before that event. 
coming up in the spring. And what event is that? Yeah, it's called Dying to Be Kind. And it's just an opportunity for the public to get involved and help us raise funds to help the animals. Um, it's a one day event, usually the first Tuesday in April. And um, it's a lot of fun. It We had, um, how many how many places um, partnered with us this year? Was it something 62? like 90? 60, oh, okay. I think 62. Oh, okay. 62 partners, uh, partners businesses that wanted to be a part of it this year so pretty much all over town all over the county you can find a meal and help a pet and one thing you can mention if people want to volunteer i always remember i was so impressed that not only do that 62 places raising funds but you also had members of the community right each place they, and it's so much fun to have people of the community yeah being i guess your ambassadors or representatives of, of the humane society and right. so that's something else they could volunteer for if they want to Get out. Definitely, definitely get in touch with us if you're interested in that, because we'll start doing the trainings in March so that you're comfortable with the information and um, know exactly what you're talking about representing Asheville Humane Society. And just a great event. Anyway, I want to thank you both for being my guest on this edition of the Blaine's World um, uh, webcast. And uh, hopefully we'll bump into each other. Larissa, it's been a long time since we saw each other. I haven't had the honor yet of meeting, meeting Mabel, but I want to thank you for being a guest and also for the great work you're doing for the community. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you. you so much, okay. Blaine. I also like to thank my producer, Cappy Tassetti, and if you stay with me when we sign off, we'll can wrap up afterwards. Thanks, guys.